Hey guys, welcome back to the Splitter game development series where we are creating a 2D top down space shooter called Space Escape using Flame Engine. So in the last video, we added the score and health text components to this game and they are displayed on the top left and top right corners of the screen respectively. And we have coded this such that the player score increases by 1 for each enemy killed and the health decreases by 10 for each collision with enemy. But if you remember, we kept the score and health field of player class public. This means anyone can change the values of these fields from anywhere. Similarly, the player field in space escape game class is also public. This is not the ideal way to do things. And in this video, we are going to fix that. First, let's make this player field private by renaming it to underscore player. You can see that VS Code is warning us that it will make player field unaccessible from other objects. As this is what we want, I'll click rename anyway. And now in the enemy class, you can see that we are getting an error while accessing player from game ref. Similarly, let's also make the score and health fields of player class private. This will cause errors in the update and render method of space escape game class. As here, we are just trying to get the values of these fields and not modifying them, it will be easy to solve these errors. For that, I'll go to the player.dart file and add a getter for both these fields. This will allow others to just get their values and not modify them. And while we are at it, let's add a method to allow modifications of score in a controlled way. For that, I'll create a method called add to score, which will take an integer as input and will add it to the current score. Now back in game.dart, we can use these newly created getters for score and health. So this solves the problem for score and health, but we still have error while accessing player in enemy class. I don't want the enemy class to get a reference to player just to modify its score. This does not seem like a major issue right now, but imagine a case where we have lots of other type of components that want to modify player score or health depending on some in-game interactions. In that case, we'll have to pass down the player reference to each and every component, which can get really ugly pretty fast. A better approach for this will be to send some kind of notification or command which the main game instance can handle and make necessary changes to the required components. For example, when a bullet hits an enemy, that enemy can send out a command informing that player score needs to be increased. So for this, I'll first create a new file called command.dart. And in this file, we'll have our command class. To indicate the type of object on which this command should run, I'll use a generic type parameter t. And since commands are only meant to be run on flame components, I'll specify that t should be strictly a component or subclass of component. Now inside this class, we need to store a callback function which we want to run on objects of type t. This function will return void and take object of type t as input. Let's call this callback function as action. And as action is non-nullable, I'll add it to the constructor of this class as a required named parameter. And finally, I'll add a method called run, which will actually run the action on any given component. One important thing that we need to take care of is that the input component C should be of type T. This is needed because the stored action expects the input to be of that type. So if this condition is true, we can safely write action.call passing in C as input. And this completes our command class. Next, let's go to game.dart file and write code so that space escape game knows how to handle commands. So first, we need a way to store all the commands fired by all the components. For this, I'll create a final field which will store a list of commands. Initially, it will be an empty list, but over time it will grow. Next, I'll add one more list of commands. This list will store all the commands that are registered in current update cycle and need to be processed in the next update cycle. This list is needed because when we are processing the original command list, it is quite possible that someone registers a new command in between. In that case, we cannot simply add the new command to original command list because it is still being looped over. So we'll add all the commands to add later command list when they are registered by any component while the update cycle is in progress. And when we are sure that all the commands from the main list are processed, we'll add new commands from add later list to main command list. 
so that they get processed in the next update cycle. As add later command list is private and I just want other components to be able to add new commands to this list, I'll add a new method called add command. This method will take a command object as input and add it to the add later command list. Next, let's add the code to actually process this command list. And for this, we'll have to go to the update method of this class. Here, before updating player score and player health, let's loop over all the commands from command list. Inside this loop, I'll again loop over all the components currently present in the components list. And in here, we can call command.run and pass in the current component. As we have designed run method to check for type of input component before running the stored action, it is safe to call command.run on all the components here. After all the commands are processed, we can clear out the command list by calling commandlist.clear. Once it is cleared, I'll transfer all the commands from add later command list to command list using add all method. And finally, we can clear add later command list. This makes sure that new commands from current update cycle are ready to be processed in the next update cycle and add later command list is ready to store new commands. Back in enemy class, we can remove this line. Now let's use our command class to increase the player score. For that, I'll create a new command object. As this command is meant to be run on player component, I'll specify target type as player. And for the action property, let's create an anonymous function which will take a player object as input. Inside this function, we can call the add to score method on player and increase the score by one. And now we just have to add this command to the command list of main game instance. This can be done by calling add command on game ref. And that is it. Now let's build and run the game to check if it works. And as you can see, the score still increases when a bullet hits an enemy. Okay. If you have been paying close attention, you might have noticed that all this business of creating and managing commands was unnecessary in this case. Because in this onCollision method, we anyways get a reference to the other entity. So we could have easily added a separate check to check if the entity is player and could have directly called add to score on that entity. And that approach is totally correct too. The only problem with that approach is it works only inside onCollision method. But that is not the case with commands. You can register new commands targeted for any component from anywhere as long as you can access the main game ref. Now just to prove my point and show you how powerful our command system is, I'll quickly add some code to demonstrate one of the potential power-ups that we'll be adding later in this game. For this, we'll need one more button apart from the fire button. So I'll duplicate this joystick action. For this new button, let's set the margin to 100, color to red and action id to 1. Now let's go to the player class and handle events from this button. So in the joystick action method, I'll add one more if check to check if button with id 1 is pressed. If this is true, we want to destroy all the enemies currently on screen. And for that, I'll create a new command. This command will be targeted for enemy type. In the action callback, will receive an enemy object and here we can destroy this enemy but right now we don't have a way to do this from outside enemy class so let's go to the enemy class here i'll just select all the code inside the safe check and i'll extract it in a method let's name this method as destroy now destroy is responsible for marking current enemy to get removed from the game world increase player score and display explosion effect and back in player.dart, we can write enemy.destroy to destroy this enemy. Finally, I'll add this command to the command list of gameref. And that is it. Now let's build run and see this in action. So here, if I click this red button, you can see that each enemy currently present on the screen gets destroyed. Also notice how player score gets updated correctly depending on the number of enemies destroyed automatically. This is all thanks to our command system. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.